Hello boys and girls, my name is Pastor Tammy and today's Bible story begins with the nation of Israel who is God's chosen people. They looked around at the other nations and saw that they had kings to lead them. They begged Samuel the prophet to tell God to give them a king. And Samuel knew that this was not going out to turn out well, but he asked God to provide a king for Israel anyway. God allowed Samuel to choose a king. So Samuel found a man named Saul and anointed him as king. Saul was someone who seemed like he would make a perfect king. He was tall, he was handsome, and he was strong. You know, he seemed like an obvious choice to be a king. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, I'll tell you. So after anointing Saul as the new king of Israel, Samuel knew one of the first things that needed to be done was to worship God with a special sacrifice. Samuel told Saul to go to a place called Gilgog. He said, at Gilgog, wait for me. At Gilgog, wait for me. I will join you there to sacrifice offerings to the Lord. You must wait for seven days until I arrive and give you further instructions. Seems like a pretty easy task, huh? Just wait seven days until I give you instructions. It seemed pretty simple, right? All Saul had to do was wait for the prophet Samuel to arrive. Then Samuel would give special instructions about the proper way to perform the sacrifice to God. Saul went on his way. He even led some of the troops into battle and he even won the battle. So after a while, Saul ultimately arrived at Gilgog and waited for Samuel to arrive. Saul waited seven days, but Samuel, he did not arrive. So rather than wait any longer, Saul decided to perform the sacrifice to God all on his own. But he was told to wait for Samuel, but he performed a sacrifice to God all by himself. He set the sacrifice on fire and it burned bright, it burned strong. But the only problem was that Samuel had told Saul that God wanted him to wait until Samuel got there so he could give him very special instructions. So Samuel arrived right at the sacrifice as it finished burning. He couldn't believe how impatient Saul had been. Samuel walked up and saw the smoldering fire of that sacrifice and exclaimed to Saul, what have you done? And Saul, he made up an excuse as to why he didn't wait on God's timing. He was just making all kinds of excuses. But Samuel told Saul, you have failed. Because of what you've done, you have failed. If you had waited and obeyed God's instructions, your kingdom would have lasted forever and ever. So since you did not wait, your kingdom will surely come to an end. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what an epic fail. So in your lesson today, you're going to learn the importance of having patience. It's super important. Hallelujah. What do you know? This is a clock. So it looked like it's about 5.08, boys and girls. So if I have something exciting to do at 10 o'clock, that means I gotta wait for almost five hours to do that exciting thing, waiting. Waiting is so hard to do. It's so hard. And it reminds me of like when kids have to wait for Christmas to come around. I'd hate waiting 364 days until the next Christmas come around. Or how about your family has planned a vacation to Disney World, but you gotta wait for three whole months to go to Disney World. I don't like that. 
Or how about waiting for one of your best friends, your best cousins to come over your house? You gotta wait. You've learned that on Monday that your best friend is gonna come over on Friday, so you gotta wait. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's a long time to wait. That's too much excitement, right? Or how about if you're going over your grandparents' house and they spoil you absolutely rotten, or any relative, but you gotta wait. Waiting is so hard to do. But you know, sometimes we have to wait on God like that. As a child of God, we have to wait on God and that too can be very hard to do. So have you ever prayed for something and had to wait for it to happen? I know I did. In fact, I'm still waiting on something to happen. But when you pray, we have to wait for something to happen. And has God ever promised you something, but then you had to wait a while for it to happen? Again, <laughs> I waited on something. How about you? So waiting on God is hard. Just like I had to wait for 10 o'clock to come. Waiting on God is just as hard. And it's hard for us. My goodness, it's hard for us. And I can't even be mad at Saul. I was trying to think, I can't be mad at Saul for not waiting because who am I? If I'm saying it's hard to wait on what I'm believing God for, how can I get mad at Saul? Saul, he didn't wait either. He's just another human being who found it hard to wait. But we don't want to be like Saul, right? We want to be obedient to God and wait on his instructions. So in our Bible story, sadly, we learned how Saul got tired of waiting on Samuel to arrive. You know, God had given a plan to him through Samuel, but he felt like it was taking too long. Samuel was taking too long to arrive. So Saul and his impatience, it led him to do something that was awful to completely take things in his own hands. Instead of waiting for Samuel to arrive, he performed the sacrifice himself. He wasn't supposed to perform the sacrifice. Samuel was supposed to come and give him instructions on the right way to do the sacrifice. But instead of waiting on God's timing, he went ahead and did it all on his own. So something we can learn from Saul's epic fail is, this is my point one, God's plan re requires patience. Let me say that again. God's plan requires patience. So God doesn't always operate in our timetable. He's outside of time. We just need time to figure out when to do what, but God, he's not like that, right? So sometimes he takes longer to answer our prayer than we want to. Like again, sometimes we don't want to be patient, but sometimes it seems like he's taking long, right? Sometimes he tells us to wait and he gives us the go ahead before we do something. Sometimes he tells us to wait until he gives us the go ahead to do something before. But, but sometimes we always have to take things into our own hands. It's hard to wait on God's time. And we want what we want when we want it, how we want it at the right time. Right. We want it right now. We don't want to wait. We're processing. You know, the people with the picket sign, ugh. We pick it in. We don't want to wait. We want it right now. But God, his timing is perfect. He know what he's doing. He's God and we're not. Sometimes he sees things that we don't see. So we have to always remember to trust God. So when we refuse to wait on God, that reveals something about us. I want you to hear me. It reveals something that's going on in our own heart about God. It shows that we don't really trust God. Mm, that sounds, oh God, I trust you. It shows though in our heart that we don't trust God. So if we truly trusted him, we would realize that he does all things well. He does everything beautiful. He's just so perfect in all of his ways. He knows what's best. His power is perfect and his timing is perfect. But instead of having patience and trust in God, too often, like, like Saul, we take matters into our own hands into, and then we do things our way and then we mess it all up. So we should have waited anyway because there are consequences of doing things outside of God's timing. So we could have gotten there quicker if we waited on God. But now that we put our hands in it, we messed it up. Now it's going to take a long time to recalculate. You know, the GPS, the navigation system, when we do things our way, now God has to redirect us on the right path.
the right way of doing things. So it's so important that we do things right the first time. So sadly, my second point is impatience leads to failure. Let me say that again. Impatience leads to failure. Saul was impatient and that impatient led to an epic fail in his life, in Saul's life. If he had been patient, you know, God would have blessed him with a kingdom that never ended. He would have blessed him with a kingdom that lasts forever. That sounds so amazing. That means that his son would have been king. Then his grandson would have been king. Then his great grandson would have been king all the way down to the great, 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 great. His throne would have lasted forever. But because of his disobedience, it's not going to be that way. And how heartbreaking is that? The crown would have stayed in his family forever. But because he was impatient, God said his kingdom had to end. What a failure because he didn't wait because he didn't listen, because he didn't trust God, because he was impatient. So it's the same with you. It's the same with me as well. It's easy to say, Saul, you is the, but we do the same thing. But we have to always remember that we don't want to find out the hard way. We don't want to learn things the hard way. So when we would decide our way is better, when we decide that our way is better, Instead of trusting God's plan, we end up in that epic fail too. Not just Saul, now it's us. Epic fail. We must learn to be patient. We must learn to be obedient. So if we trust God's timing, everything will work out fine because his timing is perfect. I can't say that enough. His timing is perfect. If we take things in our own hands, guess what? We fail. Epic fail. I don't want my name, Pastor Tammy, epic fail. Next to Saul, epic fail. Do you want your name to be written on that whiteboard, epic fail? No, because we're going to trust God. We're going to trust his timing because he knows what's best. Thank you. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We don't want to take it in our own hands. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. We don't want to take it in our own hands. So if we are supposed to take things into our own hands, like Saul did, what should we do? And that's my third point. I must trust God's timing. Let me hear you say it. I must trust God's timing. Thank you, God. We can trust God. If no one else, he's always going to be there for us. He knows what's best for us. God is in control of everything in the whole wide world. Can you, can you imagine how big the world is? The whole universe, the sun, the stars, the whole system. He's in charge of everything. All the kingdoms of the world, he's in, in, his, in his palm of, his, the palm of his hand. Look at your hand. Look at your hand right now. But the whole world is in the palm of God's hand. What a mighty God we serve is in his hand. He knows what is going to happen today. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen thousands and thousands of years from now. He knows that in the future, he's there already. He is in control so you can trust him. If nothing else, if he tells you to do something that may require you to wait, you can trust that there's a good reason. There's a good reason why he's saying wait. He sees something around the corner that we don't see. It could be danger ahead all kind of difficulty ahead, things that can hurt us. So he knows what's best. You know, let me imagine something for me, boys and girls. Imagine having a remote control car. Act like you have a little joystick. Come on, do this. So you drive in the car, it's to the left, to the right, and then you, when it acts silly, so you press on the button to go and you move it straight, 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 straight ahead as if you're gonna hit the wall. You got it? Mesh it. Make your face, mm, right? But then before it hits the wall, you skirk. Do you think that car was like, ah, I'm about to crash? Can you imagine a car saying that? But the thing is, the car was in your control. Not the car's control. You had that remote control, or they call it a joystick. I don't know what they call it nowadays, but you had control. Although it appeared as if the car was going to crash into the wall, you screw 
here because you had control. So that is pretty much the same thing with God. You understand? God, he is in control. There's no reason for that car to, to start getting all weird and like, oh, I'm about to crash. But, you know, imagine us being that car. We are that car. So we don't have to be scared like I'm about to hit the wall. I'm going to go off the cliff. Woo! Because God, he is in control. It is the same way with him. So do you understand what I'm saying? You are that car. God, he has that remote control in his hand. He's driving our lives. We can trust him. We may want to turn left, but he was like, nope, it's danger over there. It's a cliff over there. It's water over there. It's broken road over there. He's like, no, I'm going to turn right. And we were like, no, I don't want to go that way. I want to go that way. He was like, no, I know what's best for you. And then you find out later, you hear on the news that something was going on with that floody river or the, the street. It was God. He already knew. He saw way in advance because he's just a good, good father. So God, he doesn't ask us to figure out the why behind, behind his instructions. He doesn't ask. We, we don't have to figure that out. We could just cruise. Matter of fact, just get in the backseat of a car and do like this while he's driving. You can shut your eyes and recline, have your little earbuds in while God's just driving. That's how life is. It's just so much easier if we listen to him. So if he doesn't, Ask us. So he doesn't ask us to make sense of a thing. He doesn't ask us to figure things out. He doesn't ask us to make sense of it all. Instead, he simply asks us to trust him. He asks us to obey him. And it's that simple. We make it hard. We make it so hard. Lord, why? He said, I just told you to trust me. It's that simple. All we have to do is trust him. And why wouldn't you trust and obey someone who knows everything? who created everything and he's more powerful than anything. He's more powerful than everything. I want to listen to somebody like that who knows what's best for me because life should be afloat. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to make decisions. All I have to do is trust him and obey him. Trust God's timing. If you hear nothing else, trust God's timing. It requires patience, but it's totally worth it. It's so worth it. I think about all the times I trusted God and how my life turned out. And then I thought about all the stuff I took matters in my own hand and then how that worked out. Ugh. I'm like, I want to do over. I want to do over, Lord. I'm sorry. I apologize. I repent. <laughs> he's like, okay, daughter. But he's wonderful like that too. Even when you make a mistake, he's there. When you just repent, he's like, I got you. And then you try to remind him about what you did. He's like, I don't remember it <laughs> because he doesn't remember our sins. We say, I'm sorry. He forgets all about it. So if you do something wrong, don't be hard on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself because God, he doesn't remember it. He loves you that much. And when you do that, when you trust him, he will bless you. He will most certainly bless you. But if you are impatient and you refuse to trust him, it can lead to a epic fail. You don't want your name on that board, epic fail. I don't want Pastor Tammy, epic fail. You don't want your name falling under mine. We're going to erase that board off because we're going to listen to God. You like my invisible board. <laughs> we're going to listen to God because he knows what's best. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, oh God, for this lesson called I Can't Wait. But in fact, we can wait. Because we already know that you are more powerful than anything. You, 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 there's just nothing that you don't know. It's nothing that you don't see. Nothing catches you off, God. I pray for every child who is God having difficulty trusting your timing. Every child who's having a problem just being obedient. Those who are having difficulty, they want to move ahead of you, God. But I ask God, I pray that you will help them just to begin to trust you in everything, Father. Even through the toughest situations, when we try to put our hands on stuff and help you out, help us to, to, to just take a step back. We don't want to get in the way. We don't want that epic fail, God. I pray for those who are just struggling to listen to you, to be still and know that you are God. Remind them, God, that blessing follows obedience. We want to be obedient and we definitely want to be blessed. We want to have the blessings of you, God. Help us, Jesus. Help our hearts. Anything in our hearts that make us just rebellious and don't want to do what you tell us to do, what you ask us to do. Reveal those things to help us work through those things, Father. We just love you. You are so good. 
We can trust you. Thank you, God, for not being like the clock on our timetable. You are outside of time. Help us, even when we can't see. Be our spiritual GPS system. Lead and guide us. When we try to go left, steer us to the right. If we're going in the opposite direction, get our attention. Thank you, Father. Let it not be an epic fail in anyone's life right now. We bless you, God. I thank you for your word. Your word is true. It's the roadmap of our life. It give us the boundaries to operate in so we won't self-destruct, so we won't go head on into that wall like that remote control car demonstration I did. Just continue to steer us in the right direction. We thank you, God, for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And it's in your precious son, Jesus' name, we all say amen. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. Pastor Anna here. Hey, we want to ask you something. Would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Hey friends, I wanted to ask you, will you please like this video by clicking the thumbs up? And please hit the subscribe button if you like it. Then you can get all our videos. And also, can you feed me a worm, please? Thank you.